Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at how to declare and manipulate arrays in Python. Then we're going to look at searching an array in Python. So we'll start off by looking at how Python implements an array. So Python typically calls an array a list uh, or a tuple sometimes. A uh, tuple is a mathematical term that means a pair. I actually find that it used the word list in an awkward way, so I think we'll stick with the word array if you don't mind. But if you're online and you see them talking about lists, you'll know particularly they're talking about arrays. There is another structure called a linked list that we look at later that is not the same thing. So that's why I prefer the terminology of array rather than list or tuple. So we'll remember uh, an array is a collection of the same type of item, like a set in maths. And on the top we see the numbering, it's from 0 to whatever the length of the array is, minus 1. And the values for an integer array, let's say it's age, that's the values in it. So the top list is the, the numbers, the location, and the bottom list is the values stored within. If I want to declare an array with just zeros in it in Python, I do it as follows. I say an array called age is assigned, open square bracket, 0 for x in range 8. Now there are actually multiple ways to declare an array in Python, but for the kind of thing we're doing, this is the best way of doing it. In actuality, in Python, uh, you don't normally declare empty arrays, which you normally do is instantiate or fill them up straight away, so you put values in them almost immediately, but here we go. This is how we do it, so it's array age equals 0 for x in range 8, and of course because I'm putting zeros in and at zero is a whole number, it knows I'm declaring an integer array because integers are the whole number type of variable we're thinking about. So another way of declaring an array with values in is quite simply age equals open square bracket and the numbers comment close square bracket. So that will be our more common way of declaring values in an array. And we, the only thing we need to remember, two things, square brackets for an array and then the, our assignment is the equal sign, not the arrow. So if I want to see the first value in the array, I just go print, open bracket, age. Open square bracket, zero, close square bracket, close round bracket. And to print out 44 from the array we saw earlier. If I say print out the second value, item number one, it'll print out 23. And if I want to print out the last value, it'll print out 18. Um, if I want to print out all the values, I can do it simply as follows, declare the array, and then I say for a in the range 0 to 8, do print age a. And we'll remember that in Python, when I say range, what I mean is the value it starts at and the length of the declaration. So 8 isn't the number it stops at, it stops at the number 7. But there are 8 values from 0 to 7. So 0 to 8 means number 0 to 7. Think of the 8 as being n and we're declaring to n minus 1. That 8 refers to the length. All right, so that's quite simply if we want to print out all the values, that's how you do it. And again, there's code on the on both in web courses and on the, the web page you're looking at this video on that will have the Python code available for you to cut and paste directly in. If we want to print it out, but do it a bit nicer, we could print out change the print statement to print out age open square bracket the count number which will be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and the corresponding value so that'll print out age open square bracket 0 close square bracket equals 44 next line age open square bracket 1 close square bracket equals 23 age 2 equals 42 age 3 equals 33 age 4 equals 16 age 5 equals 54 age 6 equals 34 and age 7 will be equal to 18, and it'll just print it out like that, which is nice. Python is neat though, if you just do, say print age, the name of the array, it'll print out the array for you as well, because it's it's a very clever language. I would think of it like um, Lisp or Scheme, which are two other programming languages that have this kind of flexibility in terms of manipulating arrays and lists, so it's very strong, I think, and flexible in terms of the ways you can manipulate arrays if we want to add one to each value, it's exactly the same as the pseudocode, uh, or very similar anyway. It's 
we declare the array, we say for a in the range 0 to 8 again, we could print out the value and then we could add 1 onto the value. Then we could print out the array at the end just to show that it's all worked out, so, we, so that would allow us to see the values being incremented on the final version of the array. If we want to get the average value in the array, all we do is again add up loop through the array, have a, have a running counter called total, it starts as zero, then each value within the array is added to total around the loop, and then at the very end the average value is total divided by eight, which is the length of the array, and then we print out that average value, and we get the average number in the array. If we want to make that a little better, what we could do is um, use the function built into Python, which is length of age, so Python will automatically figure out how long your array is based on your declaration. So if I added in 10 more values onto the declaration of the array at the top and the length of the array was 18 instead of 8, len age would figure out that, well, that's 18 now instead of 8. If I use the function len age length of the array, then I don't need to figure out the, the length of the array either in declaring the range or getting the average. Because we know we're, when we're getting the average, what we're doing is adding the values and dividing by the number of values. So if we make the array longer, that will automatically divide by 18 instead of 8, or however longer we make it. So that's much more uh, uh, secure coding, we might use the term like that, secure coding or stronger coding. Because we had the numbers 8 in there where we have length age now. Uh, and if we change the length of the array, we'd have to change those 8s to whatever the length of the array is. Whereas if we change the array now, we just change the length of the array and it doesn't impact any other code. The more we can make features of the program independent of each other, that is to say, if, if I change one thing, what other things do I have to change in the code? If I can reduce that, the more likely the code will be to work better. If we want to declare an, an array of real numbers, it's very simple. It, it, it's exactly the same, except instead of having whole numbers at the declaration at the start, we just have values with a decimal place. So 44.44, 423.33, it's exactly the same. We could have the number 12.0 as well, that it still be a real number. So there's no real difference there. To declare an array of characters which are single letters or numbers or um, punctuation representations, here we go. Each character is declared as a single quote, whatever the value is, single quote. We can print those out. If we want to declare a set of strings, there we go. We've got a string of pets. We have dog, cat, fish, cat, dog, fish, cat, dog. So maybe we surveyed eight people's homes. The first person said they had a dog, second said they had a cat, third said they had a fish. Next said they had a cat, next said they had a dog, next said they had a fish, next said they had a cat, next said they had the dog. So that's a list of from zero to seven or whatever the length of the array is, and they are strings because they're in double quotes or inverted commas. So they are, they are, we can't do any numerical operations on them. And to declare booleans, we know a boolean, then for George Boole, is a, value, a variable that's either true or false. So if we declare an array of booleans, it's going to be a list of values that are either false or true. That's just it. So let's say um, if I was yeah, that's interesting. If I had a, if I, if I was had a boolean called is weekend for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that would be false, and for Saturday and Sunday that would be true. So maybe you'd, you'd have a boolean that you were I don't know saying what days the the bank were open on or something like that. And um, if not is weekend, then bank is open. If is weekend, then bank is closed. Something like that. So that's manipulating arrays. Now let's look at searching for values in arrays using Python again. So let's say we want to find out everyone who's 18 years old in our age array. So we can see by inspection that the one, two, three, four, five, fifth one across and the eighth one across are 18. Um, there would be numbers four and seven in the numbering of the array because that's minus one, as we know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So four and seven in the array elements. All we're, we're doing, we we'll have a loop, we say start at the start, go to the finish. For, for the first element, check if it's 18. If it is, print out 
whatever user number that is 18. It won't for the first, it won't for the second, it won't for the third, it won't for the fourth, but for the fifth it will print out. User four is 18, it won't for the sixth, it won't for the seventh, and then it, for the eighth it'll print out user seven is 18. So that'll print out two, it'll say user four and user seven are 18, assuming that user one is the first user. So that's what that program does. Again, just to note the Python, the indentation is the key, how that you tab out the if one tab and that you tab out the print two tabs is the important bit there. If you don't tab them correctly, Python won't understand and it'll give you an error. So if you're writing a program in Python and you're getting an error, the chances are it's because you haven't aligned the tabs correctly. It's a very specific language in that way, in that regard it's like COBOL or languages like that, or Fortran even to a certain extent. The placement of the columns is very important. So that's a sequential search. We search each value and then we keep on going to the end. So if the array is 10,000 values across, we'll have to do 10,000 comparisons. An alternative approach which we looked at in pseudocode is binary search. So if we sort the array first in numerical order, from start to finish, then we can just jump to the middle. So if we sort the array, as we can see here, it's 16, 18, 23, 31, 33, 34, 46, and 54. And if we're just looking for the number 18, what we do is we jump to the very middle of the array. We figure out what the middle is, it's probably 31. And then we say, is 18 less than or greater than 31? Well, 18 is less than 31, so let's take that ha let's discard the top half of the array and just look at 16, 18, 23, and 31, and let's slice that in half. And let's say we slice on the number 18, then we found the number 18 that we're looking for. So we'll remember binary search, that's what we do. We sort them in, in numerical value, and if we're looking for a number, and it could be a number, uh, a string, it could be a boolean, or it could be a character, but we s keep splitting the array in half until we find the value. So we declare the array as normal, we ask the user to ask what number they're looking for, and then we have three variables. We have found, have we first is the start of the array, last is the length of the array, and is found, we'll assume it's not found yet. So first and last are our two pointers that are pointing to the beginning and end of the array. When we split the divide the array in half, we'll move last to halfway down the array or we might move first halfway up the array, depending on what we do. So we create a, a new variable called index. In our loop, sorry, our while loop says, as long as first is, is, is smaller than last. So if these two pointers overlap each other, that means we've reached, we've searched the whole of the array. So we create a third variable, first, last, and now one called index, which is halfway between them. Now if this value index is the value we're looking for great, we've found the value. If it's not, then if it's less than, if, so if the value stored in index is less than the value we're looking at, we'll just look from the middle of the array to the end of the array. If the value we're looking for is bigger than it, then we look from the start of the array to the middle of the array. And we looked at this binary search before. And then if at no point we found the value, then we just said the value is not in the array. And again, this code is available for you, so I'd ask you to play with it, add new values into the variable, play around with it. The important thing about binary search is, unlike a sequential search where the data can be in any order, with a binary search the data must be in, in ascending order. So now it's over to you. Have a muck around with that and see what you can do with it. And we'll see you on the next episode.